Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a 2D Pong game with visual scripting inside of Unity. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we have the correct canvas size to work with. So let's go to in, in the game window. Let's go to free aspect and click on 16.9. Perfect. So this is the typical full HD landscape uh, resolution. So for our Pong game, we will need four different types of elements. We're going to need the paddles that are going to be moving up and down. We're going to need the ball. And we're going to use some bounds for, for our game. So as an art asset, I only imported a one by one white pixel that I'm going to be using since this is a 2D game. So the first thing we're going to do is go to game object, 2D object sprite. Let's call this paddle left. Let's assign that one by one pixel. Let's center it on 0, 0, 0. And let's scale this up a bit. So let's do this 30 by 150. There we go. And now we can just click here, press on W, or you can just press here on the move tab, on the move button. And just let's position it wherever we want it to. So let's just round it up to negative 8. Perfect. And then we, could, we can just control D to duplicate it. Let's name this pedal right, and it will be just on the opposite side, so it will be eight. Great. So for the ball, we're going to do the same process to the game object sprite. Call this ball, enter it on zero, zero, zero. And then we're going to use for a sprite, since we don't want a squared ball, we're going to use the knob. This comes with Unity. And let's just do this two by two. Perfect. Now we need some bounds for our, to be to work as walls in our game. We're going to go to game object again to the object sprite. So let's call this bounds left. This is going to be thirty by twelve hundred. Sorry, enter it here. and here and assign it the one by one sprite there we go now we're going to move it to the edge so let's do it there we can change the color if we want let's do this black okay now create the bounce right again it's going to be the same number but positive then we're going to create bounce top Let's do this. There we go. And center it on X. Move it up. Perfect. And then we duplicate this. Bounce bottom. And okay, so just again make this negative. And there we go. We have our basic scene set up for our game. Now that we have our scene set up, we're going to be installing Bolt. To do this, we're going to go to Window, Asset Store, search for Bolt, scroll down, you would see Bolt Visual Scripting, a quick look. And here you would see probably download if you've never downloaded it before, since I already have, just import. This is free, by the way. Just click on Import, and then we have to go to Install Bolt and click on the net 41 so double click this package and just import once it finishes importing we're going to see the bolt setup wizard this is pretty straightforward so we just going to press next here we can select which naming scheme we want to use if we want to use human naming or programmer naming even though this is a beginner's tutorial i recommend you use programmer naming it's super similar and it's going to help you transition into code or programming if you want to do later on. Let's just click on programmer naming. Here, just scroll down to the defaults. Name here, just generate. And after a little while, we finish the setup and we're ready to get started. Let's close this window. Close the asset store as well. 
there we go okay now that we have bolt installed we are ready to start coding our game so the first thing that we want to do is to be able to move our paddle up and down when we press a key so when we press the up key we want the y value to increase and we press when we press the down key we want the y value to decrease so let's leave this as zero again so select the paddle left go to add component bolt and create a new flow machine we're going to create a folder called flow machines here we go inside here let's call this paddle perfect and if we go to edit graph we can see here our starting graph you can see two nodes already the start node uh that, that that one gets called when the when you press play on the game so it gets called only once and the update node gets called every frame so in this case we want to use the update node because we want to be able to move any at any time so what we're going to do is just drag and drop this here there we go and we're going to create a get key node and if you and if you read down there it says returns true while the user holds down the key identified by the key code so this is exactly what we need so as our key we're going to use the up arrow perfect so every frame we're going to check if the user is pressing the up arrow what we want to do is to translate translate in x y and c x and y we want Sorry, X and C, we want to leave it the same. We want to increment Y, let's do it by 0.1. So what this will do is when we press up, it will, this will go to 0.1, then to 0.2, then to 0.3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Okay, that sounds good. Let's give this a try, see what happens. And our paddle is moving out of the screen this gets called every frame but the issue that we're having here is that we're not using the output of this input so this value returns true or false the, this connector returns true or false depending on if you're pressing the key or not but we're just connecting it directly to the translate so what we need to do here is first hover on this one and press the right mouse button to delete that connection and we need to create a branch we go to branch sorry branch there we go so here we can connect the, the result of this input and we have two values true and false so we only want this to happen if we are pressing the key so it will be the the true connection so now if we go here we can see again if I'm not pressing anything this gets called but here there's a false so the, the execution just stops here and the true doesn't get called because I'm not pressing the key if I do press the key I can see that I can move up and the, the top part of the graph lights up so that's working great now let's add the same thing for, for our down key. We can go here in full screen to make this easier and overview to just center everything. So we can just copy this here and just paste it. So now we're going to change this to the down key. Uh, down arrow, perfect. And now we want to move this down. This will be negative. 0.1 perfect now if, if you take a look at this you can see that this is grayed out because the flow of execu execution is never getting to these nodes so the way to connect this if you, if you were to do this which might seem like the first thing you would do this would just think about what this would do it would mean that every frame if you were pressing the key up this would go to true it would move the player up and then it would check if you're pressing down, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So we need to actually connect it from here. So if we're pressing up, if press up is true, if up, up, up arrow is true, we're going to 
translate the object. If it's not true, we're going to check if we're pressing down. And if that's true, we're going to move it down. So let's remove this. Let's see how this works now. So here is going by the false, and here is going false true also, so that's not, nothing is happening. If I move up, the top part moves, and if I go down, okay, perfect. That looks good. Now, if I want to change the, the speed of how this moves, I could either just change both these values, but there's a more practical way to do this. So if we go to Window, Variables, let's dock this there. We can create a scene variable. So let's call this battle speed. This is going to be a float. A float is a number with decimals. We put it int our whole number. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So floats can be like 0 0.156, something like that. So let's do it a float. And by default, let's do it like the, the number we have right here, so 0 0.1. So how do we use this in our in our graph? So the, the easiest way is, is to just click click on this and just drag it in if you can. No, there we go. So just drag it in here. And you connect it to the value that you want. So now this Y value. It's not going to be 0 0.1, it's going to be whatever it's in this variable, which by the case, it's 0 0.1. So we can also copy this, this node. Let's go to full screen again, An overview. Okay, let's copy this, paste it. I want it to be the same here. Now we have an issue here because if this is 0 0.1, this is going to be 0 0.1 as well, and we want the negative of that. So the easiest way to do this is to just first delete this connection. We can create a new one to multiply. Choose the multiply scalar one. Perfect. So we want to multiply the pedal speed by negative one. And that result is the one we want to connect here. So if this is, this is 0 0.1, this is going to be negative 0 0.1. Let's test it out, make sure that everything's working. So we go up, we go down. Now, if we want to test different speeds, we can click here on scene variables and we can make this, make it faster just to test it out. There we go, it moves way faster. Do it a little bit smaller. That's too, that's too much. There we go. So 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.15 feels nice. Just remember when, when you're in play mode, everything you change is not saved. So now we have to make sure that we leave the value that we want here. Okay, great. So what do we do now to be able to move the right paddle as well? Okay, so one thing we need to do is to add also the, the flow machine. So we can use the, the paddle one. We can just go to flow machines, paddle, and just drag and drop it here. So what that's going to do is that both paddles are going to share the same behavior. But that leaves us with an issue because every time we press up or down, they both move at the same time, which is not really fun. So, now that we know how to use variables, the thing that we need to do is to make sure that the key up, sorry, the, the key input here and here, that they're variables as well. So these are not gonna be seen variables because they're not gonna be the same values for all of them. That's exactly the point, we need to make them different. So they're gonna be object variables. So we're gonna go to paddle left, and on the variables uh, component, we're gonna put key up, add a new one. Now the type of this is going to be key code. We're going to, for the left paddle, we're going to choose the letter Q. There we go. 
and then we're gonna go key down also key code we're gonna choose the letter a now these are gonna be the variables that we need to put as an input here and here so you can either drag and drop it like we did before or you can just right click here and get variable get graph get object variable sorry get object variable and it should be here so key up it's gonna be here you can just copy and paste it here change its key down there we go so now we need to also set the variables on the paddle right so the, we can either create them again or the easiest way you can do this is to just go here click on the three dots copy component then select the paddle right and choose paste component values so we have that there and now we're going to use the up arrow here and down arrow there so just to recap our left paddle is going to move up and down with q and a and the right paddle is going to move up and down with the up arrow and then down arrow so let's give this a try now so i press q the left the left one moves press a q and a if i press up or down the other one moves perfect okay so this is going to be it for the first part of the tutorial on the next video we are going to create the flow machine for the ball and get the basic gameplay set up Thanks for watching and remember to comment if you have any questions or let me know what you want to see in future videos.